Move on to problem number uh, 20. The return of two assets under four possible state of nature are given below. Probabilities are given. Return on asset 1 is given. Return on asset 2 is given. Probability I have taken as P. Return on first asset I have taken as R1. Return on asset 2 I have taken as or two questions are there three questions what is the sd of the return on asset one and two second one what is the covariance between returns on asset one and two third one what is the coefficient of correlation between the return of asset one and two so this may be a case study problem or it may be a 10 marks problem so a lot of things are there to be calculated. I have tried to work here under one statement, the entire working. So let us try to work now. So I will first go for calculation of expected return. After finding the return only, we have to go for SD. Here we have to observe, most important one is SD of the return. So underline the word SD of return. Return is the most important word. You may also get the risk some other problem. So here we are focusing more on return. So underline the word return there. Let us move on further now. Here, first step is finding expected return. So expected return will be calculated R1 into P. That is for the first asset. I'll go for it now. R1 into P. R1 is this return of asset one, and probability is there. Probability is common between asset one as well as asset 2, it is a common one, no different uh, probabilities are given. So R1 into P, so 5 into 0 0.1, 10 into 0 0.3, 15 into 0 0.5 like that we have to work out. Point 0.5 3 7.5 and 2. So if you add all the four uh, values, you are going to get 13. So expected return on asset 1 is 13. So we have to find the deviation. So R1 and the expected return, R1 minus ER of 1. So 1 represents asset, asset 1. So R is 5, ER is 13. 5 minus 13. 10 minus 13, 15 minus 13, 20 minus 13. So we had to go for that. 5 minus 13 is minus 8, minus 3, plus 2, plus 7. So we have got the deviation there in R1 minus ER of 1. ER of 1 is expected return of asset 1. Then you can see the next one, R1 minus ER1 whole square. So this is the one, whatever we have found, deviation, R1 minus ER1. This has to be squared, that is the meaning of it. So minus 8 into minus 8, minus 3 into minus 3, 2 into 2, 7 into 7. So this is the square value because we need for variance calculation probability and the deviation square. So let me go for probability now here. 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.1. So probability values are written. ER1 minus ER1 whole square. This is the one. So we had to go for uh, the multiplication. So when we go for multiplication, 64 into 0 0.1, 9 into 0 0.3, 4 into 0 0.5 like that. 6.5 uh, 
4 2.7 2 and 4.9 so we have to add all the three values here we are going to multiply probability into deviation square here so 0.1 into 64, 0.3 into 9 like that we have to add all the plus values here to get the variance so we are answering for the second question first Second question is calibration of uh, the SD. For that, we will be working. For working for SD, we are first finding the variance. If you add all the four values, you are going to get 16. So, with the help of variance, we will be finding the SD next. Again, we have found for uh, a set 1. Now, we will be going for uh, a set uh, 2. So, this calibration till here, this is for a set 1 this is going to be for a set 2 till here then it is a common one for covariance purpose so again R2 into P R2 is these values P is probability value 0 into 0 0.1 18 into 0.3 18 into 0.5 like that we have to multiply here when we do that, first one is 0 because anything multiplied by 0 is 0, 8 into 0 0.3, 2.4, 3. next 9, next 2.6, so if you add this we are going to get expected return on asset 2, that is 14. Next we have to go for the deviation R2 minus ER of 2. So R2 is this 0, 8, 18, 26. So ER is known for us. ER is 14 I have taken here. So we have to find the difference. Minus 14, minus 6, 4 and 12. In this deviation we have to square here. Minus 14 into minus 14, minus 6 into minus 6 like that. So it becomes plus, minus into minus plus. So we are going to get the deviation square. So deviation square is required for calculation of variance. So that is going to be probability into the deviation square. Probability let me take 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.1 again into the square what we have got. Carefully substitute the values because you are going for next to next I am having in one place only you will be going on writing one below the other you have to be careful when you are substituting the values so 0 0.1 into 196 0 0.3 into 36 like that we will be multiplying so 19.6 10.8 11.5 12.5 we have to add all these things, 4 values, we are going to get 52.8, that is variance of asset 2. So this is the one, this is required for calculation of SD. So that is what we have to remember, that is going to be easy for you to understand uh, further. So next we are going for calculation of covariance straight away here, with the help of calculated data only. First is the p value, p value is the probability value which we know given in the problem. Next is the difference between R1 and ER1. R1 and ER1 is here. So these values we have to take it here. Minus 8, minus 3, 2 and 7. Again multiply by R2 minus ER2. R2 minus ER2 is here, 
minus 14, minus 6, 4 and 12. So substitution is the key here. When you are doing substitution, be carefully do it and then go for uh, multiplication of all the three values. 0.1 into minus 8 into minus 14 like that. 0.3 into minus 3 into minus 6. So here if you do minus into minus plus, so it becomes plus only here for these two also. First one is 11.2, 6.4, 7.4, 8.4. If you add all the 4 values, you will get 29. So, covariance of asset 1 and 2 is 29. So, this is the second question. This is actually B. The answer for question B. The answer for question B. The first one. So, we are calculating this first. With the help of variance, we can go for calculation of SD. Now we we'll go for uh, first question, calculation of uh, SD. For asset 1 here, next for uh, asset uh, 2 here only I will be doing. So SD of 1 means nothing but square root of uh, the variance 1. Square root of variance 1, when we do that, square root of 16, that becomes 4. So symbol for that will be standard deviation of asset 1. Next, for asset 2, variance 2 we have to take, variance 2 is here 52.8, square root of 52.8, when we do, we get 7.27, that is for standard deviation for asset 2. So standard deviation is done, this is for Question A. Next, we move on to for question number C. Calculation of coefficient of correlation between asset 1 and 2. The formula will be covariance divided by standard deviation 1 into standard deviation 2. So, we have all the values. Covariance is here 29. Standard deviation 1 is here. Standard deviation 2 is here. So, 4 multiplied by 7.27 that will be 29 divided by 29.08 that is 0 0.99 approximately 1. So I can say therefore correlation is 1. I will go for conclusion. So when you compare here asset, asset 1 and asset 2, how we can go on with? Comparing asset 1 and asset 2, we find asset 2 possess High risk. Please check here. SD of asset 2 is more. So it is high risk. That is what the first conclusion. Second conclusion is about the correlation. The relation between asset 1 and asset 2. When it is 1, there is perfect correlation between asset 1 and asset 2. If 1 return of asset 1 increases, return for asset 2 also will increase. If uh, return of asset 1 decreases, the return for asset 2 also will decrease. So perfectly correlated, perfectly related to each other. So conclusion 2, there is a perfect Correlation, I can say positive correlation 
so there may be negative also but it is positive correlation between asset 1 and asset 2 so both are connected to each other perfectly that is the final conclusion